Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection. Now, um, I've often been the dumbest guy in, in different groups and so this was this is a way to to be the not be the second dumbest guy in your group and put you up one step. And this is learning something about the sort of the physics in a way behind horology. This is not a course in physics, by the way. Very simple. All right, now the problem is a problem with gravity. And the problem with gravity was uh, a number of early watchmakers had, knew they had to deal with it. And the way Abraham Breguet did is that um, here you have, this is, this is the closest I have to a pocket watch. In a pocket watch, you have the gravity pulling down on the hairspring. The hairspring's like this, and gravity would pull it down, and it would make it uh, not even. But gravity, I mean, but uh, that uh, pocket watch was held, was put in a pocket, and was in a vertical position. And so what he did is that he made the tourbillon, and the tourbillon put the hairspring in a cage, and it would go in all these different directions, and this would offset having it in one position in, in a vertical position. Well, um, so that's that was a solution. Now, other solutions we're going to need to just sort of talk about real quickly um, that you might want to follow up on. And a lot of this is is interesting. At least I think it is, and it, I think it should. You know, watch collectors ought to know something about these things uh, for some watches that have these. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is by Ruta Silva. Uh, this one is a harmonious oscillator, and what he did, this is the thing that just sort of blew my mind about it. Those two wheels with gears, as you can see in the picture, they look like gear wheels because they have the little uh, teeth in them, and, but they're not. They're, <laughs> they're balance wheels, and what he did, he has these, these two balance wheels going in opposite directions, uh, and at the same time, they have each has their own hairspring, but the hairsprings are asymmetric, and this will offset anything pulling it one way or the other. Now, this is a very not the best explanation of it, but that's the essential notion uh, that that uh, Ruta Silva has in his watch called the Harmonious Escalator. He's got the names of Ruta Silva's as like Ruta Silva RS 1234, you know. And so, but this is the one, the Harmonious uh, Oscillator, and it has in, in different, um, uh, different versions of it. This one, you can see the lower right down there, you can see one that, uh, this is on the, uh, one of the, uh, watches in the Grand Prix. Now, another one is the Mirrored Force Resonance by Armin Strom. And what you have with resonance is that you have two different, really two movements. It's a two full movements in there, but they're connected to one timekeeping element. And they what they do is that the two wheels turning, if you can imagine a spoke from one of these wheels going like this and this, and then think of a pendulum going back and forth like this, and just looking at one spoke, and that's essentially what you see with the oscillation that's going on with a balance wheel. And by putting them in resonance, they sort of cancel out the different forces that take them off of whack, basically. Okay, the final one is a Cylindrical Hairspring Tourbillon by H. Moser at Company. Uh, this watch, I think, I think this particular one won the uh, won a Grand Prix prize for um, for tourbillons. And the thing about this, you can see in the picture that the the hairspring, rather than flat, is c cylindrical. And the idea behind a flat hairspring is that it'll it'll stay uh, stable. Well, uh, 
what they found that was important was to put what is called the brigade or overcoil at the top of the spring that twisted over and on. And so what they decided that, well, maybe if we could have sort of the entire spring like this, it would act as sort of one big brigade overcoil. Um, and so the cylindrical hairspring has two brigade, brigade curves attached at two points. And so this reduces the friction on the pivots and improves the isochron, um, isochronism, the stability uh, properties when the hairspring is combined with the tourbillon. So they have, not only do they have the tourbillon, but they have the tourbillon with the cylindrical hairspring. Anyway, uh, if you know all of this stuff, <laughs> you're probably the second dumbest guy. I like to be the dumbest guy because I have so much more to learn. But uh, these are things you might want to, you might find interesting. And if you want to follow up on, I think all three of these watches have a great deal to offer. And I'm, they have far more in depth and probably more accurate than my brief overview of them. I'd love to hear what you have to say, what you think about these things. And uh, this is an opportunity to subscribe if you like. And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Society, the art and science of watch collection.